Good evening, everyone. The Florida Department of Transportation welcomes you to the State Road 426 Coalition Community Event. My name is Jesse Bluen, and I'm the Project Manager with FDOT. We thank you for joining us today. During the community event, we will present information on DOT's plans to resurface State Road 426, while also incorporating improvements that can improve safety for all users of the corridor. We encourage your feedback, and during tonight's event, we will provide multiple ways that you can submit your questions and comments. All questions and comments will be responded to after the community event and will become part of the public record. I will now turn it over to our project team to begin the presentation. This event is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This event is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 451282-1. The same meeting materials will be presented across all platforms. The purpose of tonight's community event is to review the community input received on the corridor alternatives presented in June, to present the preferred alternative for the State Road 426 corridor, and to obtain community feedback about the proposed improvements. This community event was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with the state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5, Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720-6834 by phone at 386-943-5077 or by email at melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, Equal Employment Office by mail at 605 Suwanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, or by phone at 850-414-4764, or email at stefan.com k-u-l-a-k-o-w-s-k-i at d-o-t dot s-t-a-t-e dot f-l dot u-s. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. The community event was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on the project webpage, on FDOT's Public Notices website, in the local newspaper, and via a press release. In addition, a grassroots effort was made to notify the community at large about this event. Let's talk about what a coalition is. Coalitions are formed to evaluate transportation solutions and develop concepts for potential improvements that can be incorporated into roadway maintenance projects. Coalitions are community-centric and engage the local community in developing solutions. This coalition is studying the State Road 426 corridor to identify issues and develop potential solutions that enhance safety for all users. Most importantly, this coalition provides the ability to implement safety improvements as part of a programmed maintenance project. Another major benefit of this coalition is that the design and construction are already funded. The coalition is a partnership with our community stakeholders. With this in mind, a project visioning team was formed, which includes four key government partners, the City of Winter Park, Metro Plan Orlando, Lynx, and Orange County. 
There are also numerous community partners along the corridor that are involved with this project and are providing important community input. We also want to hear from you, the public, whether you live, work, learn, or visit this corridor. Your input is important to the successful outcome of this coalition. FDOT is conducting a maintenance project for the segment of State Road 426 from west of South Park Avenue to east of North Lakemont Avenue, a distance of approximately 1.7 miles. This project will provide FDOT an opportunity to resurface the roadway while adding safety and speed management elements. As part of this effort, a coalition has been formed to identify improvements that can be incorporated into this maintenance project with the goal of improving safety for all users. The State Road 426 Coalition is studying this corridor to identify issues and solutions with a focus on engaging the local community. The goal of this maintenance project is to rehabilitate the pavement while incorporating proposed improvements that can be implemented within the existing right-of-way. The State Road 426 Coalition is evaluating a variety of factors including safety, pedestrian and bicycle mobility, speed management, and traffic operations. The project is an important step to improve safety along the corridor, reduce vehicle speeds, and improve traffic flow. The goal of this coalition is to incorporate improvements that will provide for safe travel along the corridor for all users. Let's review the coalition process. The process started by gathering existing data and studies and conducting a series of field visits. The data was analyzed and reviewed to obtain a more in-depth understanding of the issues and opportunities along the corridor. Following the detailed analysis, the coalition team proposed two conceptual alternatives, which included approximately 30 types of safety improvements. The preferred alternative was developed based on technical analysis and community input received by working closely with our government and community partners, as well as the feedback we received during community event number one in June. This alternative is what will be presented to you tonight for your review and comments. Two alternatives were developed and presented at the previous community event in June. Comments have been received in several ways, including verbal comments during meetings, emails, comment cards, and via our virtual community meeting. Based on the technical analysis and community input received, we have developed a single preferred alternative that will move forward into design and subsequently construction. The following slides provide a summary of the comments received and the resulting preferred alternative. Overall, we heard public support for the following seven safety improvements to be implemented on the corridor, including 1. Barrier wall within the curves to separate pedestrians from vehicles 2. The dynamic curve system with LED chevrons through the curves 3. Brick pavement treatment at intersections 4. Raised intersections 5. Medians to separate travel lanes 6. Raised crosswalks with pedestrian hybrid beacon, PHB, signalization, and 7. The addition of landscaping and trees within the corridor in support of safety wherever feasible. We received additional suggestions, including 1. Addition of signal backplates for improved signal visibility. 2. Installation of additional speed radar signs. 3. Upgrade existing lighting fixtures on the corridor to LED. 4. Additional lighting through the curves. More specifically, we heard your comments regarding site-specific design considerations. These include Improve pedestrian crossing safety at Interlochen southbound stop condition. Request to keep the westbound slip lane at Chase Avenue. Remove or relocate the existing speed limit sign at the exit of Henkel Circle as it limits visibility. Pull back the median at Trisman Terrace to allow staging for vehicles. Remove the median that was proposed through Brewer's Curve. Add a stop for the pedestrian sign at North Lakemont Avenue. Shown here is the icon map of the preferred alternative. This alternative includes four types of improvements. Traffic calming for safer movements for all modes, enhanced pedestrian access, general safety, and traffic operations. Traffic calming elements include four raised intersections, four raised crosswalks, four speed tables, 
several medians, and landscaping. Enhanced pedestrian movements are improved through the installation of three new pedestrian hybrid beacon crosswalks, high-emphasis crosswalk markings throughout the corridor, and the reconstruction of curb returns on cross streets to shorten pedestrian crossing distance and reduce vehicle speeds while turning. General safety upgrades include dynamic curve systems, internally illuminated raised pavement markers and pedestrian barrier walls within the two curves, in-lane speed warning decals in advance of the curves, installation of five new speed radar signs, upgrades to existing lighting to LED, and the installation of new lighting in key areas. Traffic operational upgrades incorporate signal retimings, including leading pedestrian intervals to allow pedestrians a head start when crossing the street, signal backplates, and the additional eastbound left turn lane at North Lakemont Avenue. This icon map and the associated concept design plans are available during the community event or on the project website for further review. After receiving community input during and following this community event, the preferred alternative will move forward into the design phase and subsequently the construction phase. Now, let's look at some conceptual renderings of the proposed improvements that could be implemented along the corridor. The following series of slides highlight key locations along the corridor. The images on the left side of the screen depict the existing condition, while the images on the right side of the screen show the proposed improvements. The concepts depicted in the renderings are subject to change. Shown here is the intersection of Chase Avenue, Ollie Avenue, looking eastbound along State Road 426. Notice the raised intersection, additional landscaping, raised crosswalk along the slip lane, and improved pedestrian considerations. Shown here is an example of a raised speed table. This one is located in the straightaway between Osceola Court and Hankel Circle. The design was specifically developed taking emergency vehicles into consideration. This rendering is highlighting the raised pedestrian crosswalk with a pedestrian hybrid beacon just east of Trisman Terrace. This improvement includes the addition of a median island with a center pedestrian refuge area, as well as landscaping and a tree canopy to provide traffic calming and enhanced safety. Each pedestrian hybrid beacon crosswalk will include high emphasis crosswalk markings, pedestrian push buttons, advanced stop bars, and ADA accommodations. Additional lighting will be installed before the pedestrian crossing on each side of the street to illuminate the pedestrians while in the crosswalk. To improve safety through Brewer's Curve, you will notice the additional in-lane decals, a new speed radar sign approaching the curve, a dynamic curve system with LED insets, and internally illuminated raised pavement markers within all striping in the curve. The pedestrian barrier wall is shown here along the outside of the curve between the pedestrians and the vehicles. The North Phelps Avenue intersection will be raised to calm traffic and improve visibility of pedestrians. This intersection will also include red bus stop markings which denote the existing bus stop locations. The traffic signal timing will be evaluated for improvements. Upgrades for pedestrian signals will be provided, and backplates will be added to improve visibility of the traffic signals. Now let's look at the schedule. The coalition phase of this project is anticipated to be completed in November 2023, and design will immediately follow. Design will take approximately 18 months to complete. Construction is funded for Fall 2025. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public record, and every method of providing comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by October 14, 2023, 10 days after the community event, will become part of the project's public record. All questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. You may also contact the project manager, Jesse Bluen, directly by email at jesse.bluen at 
B-L-O-U-I-N at D-O-T dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S. Or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5167 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. To learn more about this project, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 451282-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Community event materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this community event and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by October 14, 2023. Contact information, this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the community event are posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash p-r-o-j-e-c-t forward slash 451282-1. Thank you and have a good evening. This concludes the presentation. We now invite you to review the event materials and exhibits and talk to the project team members. The presentation will begin again in a few moments.